Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 116 to 120. So first I'll show you guys the questions so you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's 116, 117, 118, 119, and 120. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 116, it says a particular endocrine cell type in the body secretes a substance with the formula XR, and in this case X is the core molecule, and R is a glycan group. A certain subset of these cells are studied, and it is found that the substance that these cells produce is X rather than XR. This deficit likely relates to the blank. So there's an endocrine cell, which means that it secretes something, so that something has to be made first. Let's say it's a type of protein because we have something which has a later modification to add a glycan group, which is a group of some sugars. So it's XR, X being the core protein part, R being the post-translational modification where we add the glycan group. So X is the core molecule, R is the glycan group afterwards. And then we have a certain subset that we're studying, which is normally supposed to secrete XR, but we find that uh, they only produce X rather than XR. So what is the cause of this deficit? We see that R is missing, right? So R is a glycan group. Once again, it's a post-translational modification onto a protein. So what part of the cell, which cell organelle, is responsible for post-translational modifications, and in particular, adding something like a glycan group to a protein? It's not A, the nucleus. This is where our DNA is stored. So it's where we have our chromosomes, and we're talking about somewhere that proteins are modified, and B would be correct. It's a Golgi apparatus. So part of the Golgi apparatus function is to add glycan groups to proteins as well as other post-translational modifications, and it has other properties as well, other functions such as packaging proteins into vesicles so that they can be secreted and transporting lipids around the cell. So it's kind of a transportation organelle, but yeah, this is the organelle which adds glycans to proteins. So that means that we can assume that there's a deficit in this part of the cell. It's not the smooth ER. The smooth ER is responsible for creating things that are important for the cell, including things like you know, lipids for the cell membrane, as well as some hormones that need to be secreted, small hormone molecules as well. So things that the cells need, but it's not responsible for adding a glycan group. And Finally, D, mitochondria, it's responsible for ATP production. So, you know, energy powerhouse of the cell. This is not the part where glycan groups are going to be added to proteins. In question 117, it sees a nucleotide substitution occurs that creates an early stop codon. What type of mutation occurred? We have a certain nucleotide substitution and it created an early stop codon. So what nucleotide mutation creates a stop codon? Is it a frame shift mutation? No, that's not correct. This is when you add either, when you either add a nucleotide or you take one away. So either an insertion or deletion of a nucleotide. What that does is, is, is it shifts the frame. So normally we read, you know, in an RNA, the mRNA, we read three nucleotides at a time. And that, that corresponds to one codon, which is converted into an amino acid. But if we insert another nucleotide, that shifts the frame that we're reading. We read a different three nucleotides and it keeps on traveling forward. This shift in the frame, this error, it keeps traveling forward from the point at which we either had an insertion or a deletion. But that's not what's going on here. What happened is we had an early stop codon. And what that would be is a nonsense mutation. So if we have some type of mutation that occurs, either you know one nucleotide got converted to another or something was inserted or deleted, and it ended up leading to a stop codon, whereas normally there shouldn't be one there, that's called a nonsense mutation. So this prematurely stops translation of the protein and we don't have the full functional protein, therefore you know it can't even fold properly and then it definitely can't perform its normal function. So that would be a nonsense mutation. It's not a silent mutation, option C, that's incorrect. A silent mutation is when you do have a mutation, but because of you know multiple codons corresponding to the same amino acid, it can still lead to the same final amino acid product, and therefore you don't see any big change in the protein. So it doesn't really have an effect. 
D is also incorrect. It's not none of the above. B is the correct answer. In question 118, we're asked which of the following statements regarding amino acids is false. So we're talking about amino acids. One of these is false. The rest are true. A is saying there is zwitter ionic. This is something which is true. Zwitter ionic means that they have two charges. They have a positive and a negative charge, but they cancel out to make it overall neutral. And this is true because the amino part, the amine, is protonated and is positively charged. The acid part, the carboxylic acid, where if we're thinking about a neutral pH, it's normally deprotonated and therefore it's negatively charged. A negative and positive charge cancels out to give you neutral amino acid. And then the rest of the charge depends on whatever the side group is of the particular amino acid. But they are all zwitter ionic at neutral pH, so this is correct. They all have an R or S configuration. This is incorrect. So they all have a different R group. However, for glycine, its R group is hydrogen. And if you remember for amino acids, what they look like is if we have a central carbon, we have the acid part over here. We have the amine part would be over here. Let me just make it, okay, fine. Plus, I'll get rid of this H. Right, so amine part over here, we have a hydrogen, and then we have an R group. For every other amino acid, since we have four different things attached to that central carbon, they're chiral. So therefore, they have stereochemistry. It could be R or S. And often we think of amino acids as being L or D, and most of our amino acids in the human body, they're L. But the thing is, they do have stereochemistry. However, glycine, its R group is an H, meaning that this central carbon has two H's. Therefore, it has a plane of symmetry, and it's not chiral. So... B is the statement regarding amino acids that is false. C is saying they make up the primary structure of proteins. This is true. They do. We have a chain of proteins. We have a chain of amino acids called a peptide sequence, which is the f primary structure, the first structure of proteins. And then we get, you know, later folding to give us secondary and tertiary structures. That's correct. D is saying they are carried by tRNA molecules. Yes. They carry by tRNAs molecules which bring them to you know the ribosome structure so that we can get proper translation of the whole protein so the rest are correct and b is a false statement in question 119 we're asked which represents a repeating structural unit of chromatin so repeating structural unit of chromatin so these are four terms which have you know they start the same way with nuke they're relating to genetic material in some way, but they they represent something different. So these can be pretty confusing. It's very important that you have the meanings of all of these in your mind and can differentiate them. So chromatin, that is one way in which you know DNA strands begin to fold. And if we have a lot of chromatin that packs around histone molecules, which are protein molecules, then that structure, which is a more condensed form of chromatin, is called a nucleosome. So option, option C is the correct answer here. Nucleosome is when we have a repeating structural unit of chromatin. A is incorrect. The nucleus in eukaryotes, it's an organelle in the cell, which hosts or is the, is the site at which genetic material is contained. So we have all of our chromosomes, our DNA. It's all inside the nucleus in eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, the region where you have the genetic material is called a nucleoid but they don't have an actual organelle which houses it, like the nucleus. And finally, the nucleolus. This is a structure within the nucleus in eukaryotes that's responsible for producing rRNA, ribosomal RNA. So all of these have other functions. They're not a repeating structural unit of chromatin. C is the, one, the correct answer for this question. Make sure you know what each of these terms is actually correlating to, or what it actually what the definition of it is. In question 120, it says a study is performed on a particular hum human cell population. It is found that in the majority of these cells, there is substantial presence of DNA error-proofing enzymes and many ongoing intracellular processes. In which phase do these cells most likely reside? So we have four main stages that you should know. We have G1, then we get S, then we have G2, and then M. So G1, growth one, S, synthesis of 
genetic material, the cells getting ready to divide. Then that second growth phase, where it's you know the final stages before it begins to shut down some intracellular processes and then actually get into mitosis and then M is mitosis. And then after that, you get splitting up of the original cell into two daughter cells, right? So we find that in the majority of this cell population that we're looking at, you have the presence of DNA error proofing enzymes and you have ongoing intracellular processes. So it's definitely not mitosis because you would stop intracellular processes. You just focus on dividing the genetic material and all the other components of the cell as well. It's not G2 as well because at that point you're also shutting down some intracellular processes and getting ready for mitosis. S makes sense. It's most likely S because in both G1 and S you would have intracellular processes, meaning the cell is still doing its regular thing and you know carrying out the processes that it normally does. So it's carrying out its function. But the main differentiator between these two is we see that there are DNA error proofing enzymes. So therefore we can cross out G1, growth one, because in that one you wouldn't have error proofing enzymes because this means that we are actively synthesizing more DNA. We're copying the chromosomes and getting ready later on to split this between the daughter cells. And when we're copying the chromosomes, we wanna make sure that you know it's copied properly and that there aren't errors. That's why we have a lot of DNA error proofing enzymes. So it's the synthesis phase of the cell cycle. So A is correct, it's the S phase. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is right here and also in the description. And in that course, just like this video, we go through a lot more questions that are related to the MCAT and break down the questions, what they're asking for, as well as going through all the different answer options and explaining why each is correct or incorrect so that you can develop the right type of thinking for the MCAT. Other than that, make sure to subscribe here to this channel to keep up to date with the videos that we post here. And that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next video.